Good Friday afternoon, meteorologist Jordan Young with you with your update on Hurricane Irma. There has been some major changes in the forecast from last night and I'm going to lay them out for you. First off though, let's get our latest satellite image and you can see Irma spinning nicely. An eye wall replacement cycle last night helped to weaken Irma. Now only a category 4 hurricane but still packing winds of 155 miles per hour. This is still a very, very dangerous storm and additional strengthening is possible as the storm continues to push its way towards Cuba and Florida. Right now you can see the storm affecting the Cuba area right now and that will continue to move off towards Florida over the next 48 hours. The pressure is at 925 millibars and we could see the pressure fall as we move throughout the day. The official track from the National Hurricane Center now brings this storm into the Florida Keys. This is a big change while Miami and that area may not suffer a direct hit from the eye, they're still not out of the woods yet. Winds will still be very elevated from this system. However, it now looks like the center of the storm is now going to pass towards the Fort Myers, Sarasota, the Florida Keys, and the Everglades area. That is a big change in the way we were originally forecasting this storm. We were originally forecasting it to go into Miami. So the rainfall totals, this is the five day rain that's going to be coming with Irma. Anywhere from 10 to 15 inches of rain likely across much of Florida. As you move on northward into Georgia and South Carolina, six to eight inches of rain is likely. And on up into the Carolinas, anywhere from four to six inches. Lesser amounts as you move towards the Raleigh, Durham areas where only about an inch of rain is expected from Irma. Regardless, there will be very gusty winds across South and North Carolina. Now the model tracks, this is the latest spaghetti run, and you can see that westward shift continuing to happen. This is due in part towards an upper level low that is located back over Louisiana, Mississippi, and Alabama. This is helping to pull Irma just a little bit farther west than what we originally thought. And also this area of high pressure is a little stronger as well, which has also helped shifting it off towards the west. So let's pull up some model data for you. I'm going to pull up the GFS computer model and we're going to walk through this. This is 10 a.m. tomorrow morning and you can already see some showers and storms starting to move into Florida. Now we're looking at overnight hours. This is early Sunday morning and you can see Irma approaching the Florida Keys. And then by the early morning hours, this is 7 a.m. on Monday morning, there's Hurricane Irma unleashing uh, its winds, rain, and also that very heavy storm surge across the Florida Keys. It then progresses on up and makes a second landfall roughly around the Fort Myers and Sarasota area. And during all this time, very heavy rain occurring, elevated storm surge, and intense winds. The winds are estimated to be at around 150 miles per hour sustained at landfall. So this is a very serious storm. As we move on through the evening hours on Sunday and into Monday, the storm begins to weaken as it pushes on up towards Jacksonville, Florida and the Florida and Georgia line, but it's still a hurricane at this point. Now it quickly weakens into a tropical storm through the day on Monday and then this is at 4 o'clock Monday afternoon and you can see the rain beginning to spread up into our area here in the Carolinas. As we move on forward, this is um, early Tuesday morning and you can see the center of the storm over the Atlanta area and we've still got some very heavy rain ongoing across the Carolinas. The storm then moves up into Tennessee and that's where it will quickly fall apart. Now we're going to look at a future cast radar. This is the uh, HWRF hurricane model and it shows that nice eye wall making landfall across Florida. This is at 4 a.m. and now as we move in through the morning hours and the early afternoon hours, a second landfall is being shown here on the HWRF. That storm continues to march off towards the north, still very intense as we move into 1 a.m. This is 1 a.m. on Monday morning and you can see still a very intense storm at this time, probably a category one or two hurricane with winds of around 80 to 100 miles per hour. As it pushes on to the north, it begins to lose its hurricane characteristics as it's over the land, doesn't have that warm water to provide it energy. And this is 7 p.m. on Monday and you can see very heavy rain across Georgia, Alabama, South Carolina, North Carolina, Tennessee, 
extreme amounts of rain as possible. Anywhere from four to six inches of rain is likely across many areas across Georgia, South Carolina, and North and Western North Carolina from this event. That will lead to some flooding, but also power outages will be possible across these areas as winds could gust up to 40 miles per hour. Continue to make your plans for Hurricane Irma. I'm going to continue monitoring that westward shift and see if the models continue to move the storm farther to the west as time goes on. But this is still going to be a very intense storm. We are still expecting a Florida landfall at the moment, but anything can change as we move closer to the event. So be sure to look out for later updates this evening on WXJordan.com and on WXJordan on Facebook. I will be sure I keep you updated with the latest trends on Hurricane Irma. Thank you, I'm meteorologist Jordan Young.